Okay, so first, just the news is uh, exam two is a week from today. So that would be the 20th. And even though uh, we're going to have done quite a bit of uh, Newton's second law stuff by then, uh, the exam is only going to cover up through three through free body diagrams. Okay, so um, so the topics are up through free body diagrams. Um, and remember that it's cumulative, so you should be sure that you're ready to answer questions about unit stuff and uh, 1D kinematics and 2D kinematics and vectors and free body diagrams, okay? So uh, what I would recommend doing is just start going through the problems. Uh, go back to the start of those daily problems and go to them and just ask yourself, do I know the steps for doing this problem, you know? And if you do know, like, oh yeah, you do this, 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 and you know that's it, then you're, you're good on that thing, go on to the next one, until you find a problem where you're just not real clear on how you go about it, and then spend a little time on the problems like that. And if you approach it that way, I think it, you can, it can, get you ready to answer questions on everything pretty well. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the exam? Okay, anybody have any homework problems you want me to do? Okay. Um, well, I, I'm not done with your lab exams yet, uh, but I, I did grade the weekly assignments, uh, so those are up, and if you look at the, um, uh, if you open up the assignment itself that you submitted, uh, there'll be handwritten, you know, scores on individual problems and notes on where, on things if I feel like you needed to, needed feedback on something. Um, so look at that. And then there was one person, uh, I can't remember who it was right now, um, but the, the photo just showed up really small, and when I expanded it, it was too blurry to read. So, um, so uh, there was one person I left a comment in the grades. There's no grade on that assignment, but there's a comment there that's like, can you just email me this assignment, and we'll get that fixed. Okay, and then uh, the, uh, so look for the, Look for the lab exam scores to be posted, you know, by Friday, and then uh, I'll give them back to you next week. Okay, well, uh, we've been talking about Newton's second law. And Newton's second law says add up all the forces on the chosen body. That's equal to the mass of the chosen body uh, times the acceleration uh, of the chosen body. And I've done an assignment or two uh, So now I'm going to go on to some specific uh, setups that you have to approach sort of different ways. Um, so here are the specific um, cases for Newton's second law. And before you go into the problem, you, you're going to have to recognize which one of these you're dealing with, you know. Um, the first one is collections of bodies in contact. Um, and 
for these, we're talking about bodies that have the same acceleration. So imagine like a row of carts uh, all in contact with each other. And if you push on one side, they all have the same acceleration. They all move as a single thing. And that's the one we'll spend some time on today. Uh, second, uh, we'll talk about rolling and sliding on inclines. Uh, we've already done an example or two of a body that's rolling along a flat surface, but um, this is going to deal with, well, what if it's not on a flat surface? What if the surface is tilted some way? How do we approach it? Um, and then the third one is collections of bodies connected by cables and uh, pulleys. And the fact that the pulleys are in these problems means that the bodies, even though they, in some sense, they're, you know, their accelerations are related to each other. Like, imagine two masses connected by a cable that goes over a pulley. If you let this one drop down or you pull this one down, it makes the other one go up. And if you pull this one down, it makes the other one go up. You know what I mean? And so obviously their accelerations are going to be related, but they're not going to be the same. One's moving down and one's moving up. And really, any time you have pulleys in a problem, that's going to be the case. Um, so this is cases where the body's motions are related to each other, they're applying forces to each other, but the accelerations are different. Okay, so that's what we're going to get into. Um, before I start with collections of bodies in contact, let me give you a problem, and I want you to just sort of, this is just like a memory refresher. Um, I'm going to give you a little time to try to work through this sort of a simple Newton second law problem, and then I'm going to go through it, and I want you to use that as a way to kind of identify things that are clear and things that are confusing. Um, Okay, so let's say uh, we have a mass of, uh, let's say this is 30 kilograms, and we apply 100 Newton force this way, um, and a 20 Newton force this way, and a 50 Newton force this way. And I want you to calculate um, the force vector applied to the cart by the ground. And then second, uh, calculate the acceleration vector. Okay, so the first step is gonna be to draw a free body diagram of that cart. Um, so I'm gonna give you a minute, try to draw a free body diagram of that cart and then I'll come back and do it, and then we'll just kind of walk through this step by step. Okay, so uh,
Okay, well, uh, first I'll put the weight force. 30 kilograms times 9.81 is 294.3. And then next I'll put all the forces that are given. So there's 100 here, 50 here, and 20 here. And then now I'm going to go around the boundary looking for places where the surroundings make contact. Uh, the only place that the surroundings contact the boundary is at the wheels at the bottom. Uh, is that a pushing or a pulling contact? Pushing. pushing, yep. And so the rules are perpendicular to the surface, toward the chosen body, and I'll call that N. But if you really want to call that Q or X or Z or whatever, I can't stop you. Okay, that's just a variable name. Um, so now that we have this free body diagram, uh, the next step is to put all this stuff into Newton's second law. Um, so take a minute and express all of these one, two, three, four, five forces as vectors and put them in the left side of the equation. If you want to write the whole equation, that's fine, but um, I, I was planning to do the left side first and then, uh, and then talk about the acceleration after that. So take a second and see the 20 is in the positive x direction. So that's positive 20x, 0y. The 100 is in the negative x direction. So negative 100, 0. The 50 is in the negative y direction. So that's 0x, negative 50y. Uh, the weight force is in the negative y direction. So 0, negative 294.3. And last, that normal force, that pushing force, is in the positive y. So that's 0, positive n. And this sum of forces is equal to uh, the mass of the body, 30 kilograms, times the acceleration. So now you have to think about, is this acceleration, is this body free to move along the x-axis or along the y-axis? X, right. It's, it's only free to move horizontally. To move in y, it would have to jump off the surface or sink into the ground, and we can see it's not going to do that. But uh, one thing about this is, since there's a bigger force pushing it in the negative x direction than in the positive x direction, you might be able to look at this and say, okay, the acceleration is going to be in the negative x direction. But you don't have to do that. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about that. Whether it's moving in the positive or negative x is just going to come out on its own in the math. Okay? So all you have to do is just say, okay, it's moving along x. So I'm going to write acceleration as a for x, 0 for y. OK? Um, OK, so now what we're going to do is solve these two equations. And we have uh, this equation. Uh, the x equation says 20 minus 100 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 30a. And the y equation says 0 plus 0 minus 50 minus 294.3 plus n is equal to 30 times 0. Oh, this I wrote this as 3a, but it should be 30a. Uh, so this is all equal to 30 times 0, which is 0. Okay, so now take a couple minutes and uh, see if you can calculate the force vector uh, that's applied to this cart by the ground. Uh, there are five force vectors given on the left side of this equation, right? So if I go from left to right, let's call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? One of those is the force vector applied to the 
to the cart by the ground. Which one? One, two, three, four, or five? Five. Yep, exactly. So this is what we're trying to find. And so if you look at that, in order to find that vector, all we need to calculate is n. We just need to figure out the value of that variable n. So we're going to use the y equation to calculate n. This says negative 50 minus 294.3 plus n is equal to 0. And so n is equal to 344.3. Just doing the algebra there. And so uh, now we can just plug that n value into here. And the force on the cart by the ground is zero, and then the y value is n, which we know now is 344.3 newtons. Or another way you can write that is you can see that this force is in the positive y direction. So you can write this as an upward force of 344.3. Any questions about that one? And now uh, the acceleration. So take a minute and see if you can calculate the acceleration vector that these forces cause in this cart. Um, collections of bodies in contact that have the same acceleration. And the approach we're going to take is this. And you're always going to do this. Uh, first, you're going to isolate the whole system. So the chosen body is actually going to be all the bodies in the system together. Um, so you're going to isolate all of the bodies together. You're going to do a free body diagram of the whole collection. Um, and you're going to use this to calculate the acceleration vector. Now that you have the acceleration of the system, you're going to isolate the individual bodies. And the accelerations of the individual bodies are the acceleration you calculated in step one. And you're going to use that known acceleration vector to calculate contact forces. OK, so here's an example. Uh, let's say that we have two carts. Uh, a five kilogram cart, and it's in contact with a 10 kilogram cart.
So this one's five, this one's 10. And uh, let's say we have a 50 Newton force over there and a 25 Newton force here. And we want to calculate the force vector applied to the 10 kilogram by the 5 kilogram. And actually, let's do that, but let's also calculate then uh, the force vector applied to the five kilogram by the 10 kilogram. Okay, so the first step is we're going to treat this pair of bodies like it's a single body. So I'm going to start by drawing a free body diagram of the whole thing. And we're going to use that to calculate the acceleration. Um, the weight force of this whole thing is the combined mass, so 15 kilograms times 9.81, so that's 147.15. And then there's the two known forces, the 50 over here and the 25 over here. And then the last place that the surroundings make contact with the boundary is where the ground touches the wheels. I'm going to treat that as, as if it's just happening at one single spot, and I'll call that N. Okay. Uh, and then we'll use this in Newton's second law. Uh, we have the 25 Newton force in the positive x direction, the 50 Newton force in the negative x direction, the weight force in the negative y direction, the normal force in the positive y direction, And then that's equal to the total mass, 15, times the acceleration vector. Is this system free to move along the x-axis or the y-axis? X, and so I'm going to write the acceleration as A0. Now, we're really just using this to find the acceleration vector, which is this. And so we really only need whichever equation is going to let us calculate that variable A. In this case, that's the X equation. So the X equation says 25 minus 50 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 15A. And so this says negative 25 is equal to 15A. Um, and so A is equal to 1.6 repeating negative meters per second squared. And so the acceleration vector then just plug that negative 1.6 repeating into the circled thing. 
and you get that the acceleration vector is negative 1.6 repeating zero. And since that's the negative x direction, you could also write this as um, an acceleration like this. Okay, so if you look at the picture, you have the bigger force uh, pushing to the left, and so the acceleration is going to be to the left. That makes sense. So now we want to calculate the force vector applied to the 10 by the 5, okay? Um, so I'm going to isolate the one we want the force on, since, you know, whatever you isolate, you're calculating forces on that body. So I'm going to isolate the 10 kilogram cart. So free body diagram of the 10. Um, so there's the outline. Uh, we have a weight force of 10 times 9.81, so 98.1 newtons. And of the 25 and the 50, are either of those applied to the boundary of the 10? The 50 is, but not the 25. Do you see that? So that 25 is not going to show up here, but the 50 will. Um, so we have 50 this way. And now we'll go around the boundary looking for contact. There's a pushing force from the ground. And I'll call that N10 since we already used N. And this doesn't have the same value as the total pushing force on both of those bodies. And then keep going around and you get to the point where the 5 is pushing on the 10. So... The rules for pushing are perpendicular to the surface, toward the chosen body, and give that a variable name. I'll call it R. And now we're done. We have all of the forces acting on the 10. So now we'll go to Newton's second law. That R is in the positive x direction, so that's R0. The 50 is in the negative x direction. The 98.1 is in the negative y direction. The N10 is in the positive y direction. And this is all equal to the mass of our chosen body now, so that's just 10, times the acceleration vector. What's the acceleration vector of the 10 kilogram cart? Yep, that's, what we, that's why we isolated the whole thing to start, is that this acceleration now we can use for each of the individual bodies. So the acceleration is going to be negative 1.6 repeating, 0 for y. Okay. Uh, well, we're trying to calculate the force on the 10 by the 5. So if these are forces 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, which one are we trying to calculate? 1. Yep. So we want this, which means that all we need to calculate is that R. Okay. So the X equation says R minus 50 is equal to 10 times negative 1.6 repeating. And so R minus 50 is equal to negative 16.6 repeating.
add 50 to both sides and you get R is equal to, uh, oh, that's added. So this is 33.3 uh, repeating Newtons. And now all we have to do is plug that value into the vector. Um, so the force on the 10 by the 5 uh, is equal to 33.3 .3 repeating 0 newtons. Uh, and that's in the positive x direction, so you could also write it, uh, show the arrow pointing in the positive x direction, and it has a magnitude of this. Okay, so um, if you looked at this problem and didn't do the calculation, you know, just based on intuition or whatever, what do you think? Like, how hard do you think these bodies are pushing on each other? Maybe some people would say 50. Some people would say 25. Some people would say maybe an average of the two. Some people would say add up the two. But we just figured out that, no, it's somewhere in between. It's not the average. Uh, and there's not really any way to do it except this. But this is a really useful thing for, like, engineering-type projects because, well, there, there isn't a lot of engineering that goes into carts pushing on each other. But if you did have a company that was trying to, as cheaply as possible, make carts that could withstand this setup, you know, um, now you know that they're pushing on each other with a magnitude of 33 and a third um, newtons. And so you need to make sure that that wall that's in contact can withstand that 33 newton force. Okay, and so you know that whatever your material is, it needs to be thick enough to withstand that force. Okay, in real engineering practices, it's not carts pushing on each other. It's more complicated things going on in engines or whatever. But the idea is the same. You're still trying to calculate the forces. One thing is applying to another thing so you can see what kind of materials are going to work for you. Anybody have any questions about that first part? Okay, well now uh, we are um, now we want to figure out the force that the 10 applies to the 5. We just figured out the force the 5 applies to the 10. Uh, one thing I want you to notice first of all is remember that when you have two bodies pushing on each other, you use the same variable for both of them. So, um, if I draw a free body diagram of the five now, it looks like this. Uh, there's a weight force of five times 9.81, so 49.05. On the 5, that 50 doesn't show up because it's not acting on the boundary, but the 25 does. So we have the 29, uh, 25 Newton force over here. And then going around the boundary, there's a pushing force from the ground. I'll call that N5. And then there's a pushing force um, applied uh, by the 10 uh, that's perpendicular to the surface toward the chosen body. And we know we're going to use the same variable as we did for the other one. And so now, if you recognize that, you don't even have to use Newton's second law. This is the force vector we want. Okay, um, and so the force on the 5 by the 10 
is equal to, um, you know, that's in the negative x direction. Plug in the value for r, and you get negative 33.3 repeating 0. Or in other words, it's acting in the negative x direction with a magnitude of 33.3 newtons. If you didn't recognize that, could you, could you get that answer? If you didn't recognize that, that that value r needs to be the same value r we had in this, you could do it. Uh, so notice, I just want to show you how we could have done this too. We could have calculated... this without doing part A first. And the way we would do that is uh, we would draw a free body diagram of the five. There's a weight force down of 49.05. There's a 25 Newton force this way. A pushing force from the ground. And then there's this pushing force from the 10. But let's say we didn't, we hadn't already calculated what that R is. So then we'd have to go to Newton's second law. Uh, the 25 Newton force is in the positive x direction. The r is in the negative x direction. The weight is in the negative y direction. The normal force is in the positive y direction. And all these add up to the mass times the acceleration that, you know, we still would have had to do this part first, calculate that acceleration vector. Um, we want this force vector. And so we just need to calculate that r. We have that 25 minus r is equal to 5 times negative 1.6 repeating. And so 25 minus r is equal to uh, negative 8.3 repeating. Um, and so R is equal to 33.3 repeating. And now the force on the 5 by the 10 is equal to negative 33, 0. So the thing that's kind of surprising, cool about this is uh, notice that when, in all the cases where I calculated that contact force, there's one of those two external forces missing from my calculation, you know what I mean? Like, we know from looking at the start of the problem, there's this 25 Newton force and this 50 Newton force. But like when you go to the individual bodies, one of those two is missing from each one. 
So it's like, how does, how does the math know, you know, that the contact force is the same here that it is here? You know what I mean? It feels like at first you're sort of like, it doesn't seem possible that that could work. The reason it works, well, does anyone, can anyone see how it, how it works? The other external force is baked into it, uh, sort of hidden away uh, when we calculate that acceleration. Okay, so in the first step, we calculate the acceleration of the whole system using, uh, where is it, both of those two forces. And then when we isolate the individual bodies, we're using that acceleration. So it's like that acceleration gives the extra information that, wasn't, that wouldn't be known otherwise. But you can go about these problems a bunch of different ways as long as you calculate the acceleration first. And you'll get, you know, if you're thinking about it right, all of those answers will be consistent with each other. Like, have, have any of you ever seen anything as cool as that? Would you say ever? Since kindergarten, let's say. No, thank you. Okay, so we're all in agreement. Uh, so uh, now I'm gonna do a problem like this and give you a chance to think about it and hopefully sort of solidify these steps. Um, Okay, so let's say uh, this one is 100 kilograms. This one is 80 kilograms. And we have a force pushing this way of 300 newtons. Calculate the force vector on the 80 by the 100. Okay, so the first step is gonna to be to isolate the whole thing together and calculate that acceleration vector. Take a few minutes and uh, see if you can calculate that acceleration. Okay, so um, free body diagram of the whole thing. Uh, there's a weight force down of 180 times 9.81. So that's 1,765.8. And then there's a 300 Newton force. And then there's a pushing force from the ground. And Newton's second law says 300, zero plus zero, negative 1765.8, plus zero N is equal to the combined mass, 180, times the acceleration vector. Uh, this is free to move in the X direction, so I'm gonna write that as A zero. This is what we're looking for. So we just need to calculate that A. So the X equation says 300 plus zero plus zero is equal to 180A. Uh, 
And so A is equal to, uh, well, 1.6 repeating again. Now plug that into the vector and you get an acceleration vector of 1.6 repeating zero. Or in other words, it's acting or it's accelerating in the positive x direction with a magnitude of 1.6 repeating. Anybody get through that calculation? Okay, good. Uh, anybody have any questions about it? Anything that was surprising there? Uh, all right, well, now the next step is you're going to isolate one of those two bodies and calculate the force applied on the 80 uh, by the 100. So see if you can get through that step. Okay. Uh, so now uh, we're looking for a force on the 80, so I'm going to isolate the 80. There's a weight force down of 784.8, I think, right? Uh, that 300 isn't applied to the 80. That's somewhere else. Um, there is a, but now going around the boundary, there is a pushing force from the 100. I'll call that R. There is a pushing force from the ground. I'll call that N80. Uh, uh, Newton's second law says... R zero plus zero negative seven eighty four point eight plus zero N eighty is equal to the mass eighty times the acceleration vector that we just figured out one point six repeating zero. We're looking for this force vector. And so the X equation says R plus zero plus zero is equal to 80 times 1.6 repeating. So R is equal to Uh, one thirty three point three repeating Newtons. Plug it into the vector, and you get that the force on the eighty by the one hundred uh, is equal to one thirty three point three repeating zero. Any questions about that? Yes? No, that's a really good question. Uh, so no, it doesn't matter which one you solve for if you keep in mind that the magnitude of that contact force is going to be the same. The direction is just going to be different for the different bodies. So if you wanted to isolate the 100 instead, you could calculate the force on the 100 by the 80 and then just flip the direction. That's exactly right. Um, I don't think I need to go through this whole problem, but let me just show you one more thing, a case where the two things are connected by a cable instead of, uh, instead of pushing on each other.
So let's say you have a 20 kilogram thing and a 10 kilogram thing, and you're applying a force this way of 100 newtons. And say you want to know what's the force vector applied to the 20 by the 10, or by the cable, I guess, really is what it is. Well, in this case, they're connected by a cable. They're not pushing on each other, but they're still pulling on each other via this cable. Um, so I'm going to start out by isolating the whole thing. Um, we have a downward force of the whole thing of 30 times 9.81, so 294.3. We have a 100 Newton force over here and a pushing force from the ground. So Newton's second law says 100, zero. plus zero, negative 294.3, plus zero N, is equal to 30 times A zero, um, so the X equation says 100, is equal to 30A, and so A is equal to 3.3 .3 repeating, and so the acceleration vector is equal to 3.3 .3 repeating zero. Uh, so now I'm going to isolate the 20 kilogram. There's a weight force of 20 times 9.81, that's 196.2. Uh, there's a pushing force from the ground, I'll call that N20. And then the last thing is, uh, now there's a pulling force applied by this cable, and so the rules of a pulling force are parallel to the cable, away from the body, and I'll call that T. And then Newton's second law says zero, negative 196.2 plus zero N20 plus T zero is equal to 20 times the acceleration vector. The X equation says T is equal to 20 times 3.3 .3 repeating. So T is equal to 66.6 .6 repeating Newtons. And then put that in the, the vector and you get the direction too. Any questions about that? Okay, well, let's stop there, and uh, we'll just keep going with the next thing next time. Uh, so start getting ready for the test, and uh, if you have any questions related to the test, bring them on Monday, and I'd be happy to answer questions, go through problems, whatever.